So let's begin. In order for a complex function to have unambiguous integration and differentiation, the Cauchy-Riemann equations or Cauchy-Riemann conditions must be satisfied. I've written those at the bottom left of your screen. Del u del x is equal to del v del y. Del v del x is minus del u del y. In order to motivate the Cauchy integral formula, I'd like to consider the following complex integral. We're going to say the integral is equal to the closed contour integral in an anti-clockwise direction of 1 divided by z minus a integrated dz. Of course, z is a complex number which has a real component x and an imaginary component y. Note that the Cauchy integral theorem does not apply because there is a singularity or a pole at the point z is equal to a. If you plug z is equal to a here, you're going to get a divide by zero scenario, which is infinity, or it's not even really defined. So the Cauchy integral theorem doesn't work, and we're not going to get zero. I'd like to introduce a small bit of notation before we begin. Capital F of z is going to be our entire function. So in this case, capital F of z is 1 over z minus a. But later on, we're going to get more complicated functions. We may get something like this, where we have another function, small f of z, being integrated as well. Still, we would say that capital F of z is equal to small f of z divided by z minus a. But we don't need to do that so rigorously quite yet. Now, the point here is that we have a pole at z is equal to a. So we're not going to get i being equal to 0. The question is, are we able to integrate around the point z is equal to a? Can we use a circle and see what happens? Let's consider our Cartesian coordinate system. We're looking at the complex plane. We have a real x-axis and our imaginary y-axis. And we have the point z is equal to a, which is just in here in the blue circle, as the blue circle. It's displaced from the origin by a. And what we do is we draw a circle around it of radius r. And we define the angle theta as follows. So what we're going to do is try and integrate our function, this capital F of z, which is equal to 1 over z minus a, along this particular circle, which is outside of our um, outside of our pole by a radius r, and see what happens. We know, of course, that z is equal to x plus i times y. Therefore, in order for us to do our path integral, we're going to invoke Euler's equation and rewrite z as a plus r times e to the i theta. We can use our familiar theorem from differential equation, excuse me, from partial differential equations, and say that dz is del z del theta d theta, and calculate dz. Putting all those into the path integral, we see that the counterclockwise closed counter integral of dz over z minus a can be rewritten as the counterclockwise closed contour integral from 0 to 2 pi of iota times r d theta. This, of course, is a reasonably trivial integral for us to evaluate. And we see that i is, of course, non-zero, but equal to twice pi times i. Now, this is amazing. Somehow, we've danced around the fact that there is a singularity inside this particular contour. And this is a very significant result, which we're going to build upon. Now, let's consider a new integral of the function f of z. Now, remember, of course, we're going to say from now on that if it's small f of z, this function has no poles or singularities. This function is analytic. Remember, something is analytic where it can be described by a power series expansion or where it is differentiable at that point. So my nomenclature will be that small f of z is an analytic function, capital F of z is not an analytic function. Let's consider our integral i. i is going to be the closed contour integral 
in a counterclockwise direction of small f of z divided by z minus a. This function here is capital F of z. So we're integrating capital F of z around our contour. Previously, of course, f of z was equal to 1. I think it's useful for you to get used to my nomenclature. I'm saying that capital F of z is the function which is not analytic. It's made up of the analytic function small f of z, and in this case it's divided by z minus, well, the pole a. But you'll see later on that a lot of our functions will be written in this manner.